One of the thrilling stories that uh, a friend of mine shared with me, Myron, who lives out in North Dakota, uh, they had had a, a young fellow named Troy who attended their children's work and he was really a pretty troubled kid and uh, some of the folks thought maybe he shouldn't even be there because he spoiled it for the rest of them, but they bore with him and eventually Troy uh, grew out of the age limit. Sometime later, uh, the phone rang and uh, Troy was on the phone and he said, Myron, my, my father's dying and, uh, and you need to come and tell him how to get to heaven because he doesn't know how to get to heaven. And so Myron got in his truck, went over and picked up Troy and they went to the hospital and when they got there it looked as if uh, the father, Reuben, was uh, in a coma. He was dying of cirrhosis of the liver. He had spent most of his life drinking and carousing and had uh, spent some years living under a bridge. Myron wasn't sure that he even could hear what he was saying but uh, there was quite a large number of relatives in the room and so in uh, a good strong voice uh, Myron explained the gospel to, uh, to Reuben. He prayed with the family and then he left. The doctors had said the Reuben only had a few hours perhaps to live, but uh, he proved the doctors wrong and he actually was released from the hospital, but went right back to drinking and in a very short time he was back in the hospital again. One day uh, Myron was driving past the hospital and the Lord really impressed on him the need to go and, and talk to this man. It reminds me of the adage, you can never do a good thing too soon because you never know how soon it'll be too late. Uh, Myron went in and there was Reuben and Myron asked him, Reuben, do you remember what I said to you when uh, I was here the last time? And Reuben said, I, I did, but I never really made a decision on it. I, I can't imagine that God could forgive me after the way I've treated my family. Myron turned in the scriptures to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15 which says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Myron said, look, if Paul was the chief of sinners, murdered Christians for a living and God saved him, then of course he can save you. You know, God's had the money in the bank to save you for 2,000 years. It's a bit late for God to back out on the arrangement now. And Reuben said, well, if God will save me, then I want to be saved. And very simply, he prayed and asked the Lord to save him. And immediately, Myron could see the tremendous change, the smile that broke out on his face, the peace that he had as a result of putting his trust in Christ. And uh, after a few minutes of visiting together, Myron left. Well, the next day he received a phone call from uh, Reuben's daughter telling him that Reuben had died and, and asked if he might take the funeral, although the family were of another religion, would he take the funeral? She said, it's just going to be a, a pauper's funeral, but if you don't mind. And then she said, you know, we must have passed in the elevators because as you were leaving, I was coming and I went into the room and my father was sitting there with that big smile on his face and he told me, you listen to Myron, Myron preaches the true gospel. We, we didn't hear the gospel when we went to church and, uh, and you don't have to worry about me now, I'm going to heaven, God has forgiven me for all my sins. Myron said, well, maybe Reuben lived like a pauper but he's not going to be buried like one. He said, we're real Christians, we'll put on a real funeral. And they arranged for a lovely funeral service and also a, a meal. And uh, when Myron finished preaching the gospel, they went downstairs. And Myron said uh, almost all the homeless fellows in, in the city were there to see their friend go out in style. The family was sitting in one corner and these homeless fellows in another corner. And, then over, separated from them all, was a, an older woman and a younger woman. They were both weeping. Myron went over to see if he could help them. He put out his hand to them and asked if, if he could find uh, some way to help them. And, and the woman said, oh, these are not tears of sorrow. These are tears of joy. 
She said, I was Reuben's first wife. Twenty years ago, I put my trust in Christ, and it was too much for Reuben, and he threw me out on the street, and this daughter of mine was a babe in arms at the time, and we've been praying for 20 years that Reuben would get saved. You know, when I hear a story like that, I'm just reminded, very often in our work, we feel that the Lord uses us in some significant way and don't realize there are many links in the chain. And sometimes you may speak a word, an encouragement, something to a person, and you never know the influence that it's had on them. Not till we get to heaven will we see all the links in the chain and realize that God has used even a smile, a handshake, a, a gospel verse, a word of encouragement to build the case, to surround them with a conspiracy of love so that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses everything might be established. It's never too late for God. And what a wonderful story to remind ourselves that God is able to save sinners, even the chief.